Shell scripting often baffles even the best of us, much like trying to decipher an alien language. Can AI act as our universal translator, or will it leave us lost in translation? Writing shell scripts can be tedious. A script usually starts out as just a few simple commands, but then it gets more and more complex. In order to make the script more flexible, variables hold configuration parameters. Eventually, we want to pass some of these variables from the command line to our script. Even adding a small group of flags, parameters, or options can result in a tangled web of if statements or case switches. Now, imagine a world, a world where artificial intelligence helps us with scripting. Let's take a look at a simple command, ls, when we ask for help. Here are all the flags and options. It usually starts off with how to use the command, and that's followed by a list, and that's usually the short name of the option, the long name of the option, and then a short description of what the option does. The entry might also describe the valid input and format of the parameter. I've created a prompt using a couple of the more interesting options we just saw. You are an expert shell script writer. Here is a description of command line input for a shell script. Please create a script which parses the command line and checks to make sure the arguments are in range. Then we have the table here which describes each option, sometimes defining parameter values. I've included a tricky description on block sizes, just as a little test. Let's copy our prompt. We switch over to our browser and we are in chat GPT. We're going to select the default version of GPT-4. Let's paste in our prompt. Then we send the prompt as a message. That's interesting, it's writing a function to display help. Now it's also added a version. Now it's parsing the block size parameter, and then the range. Then finally it parses the command line. There's the telltale case statement. Gives us a little write-up, then it reminds us to make the script executable. Most impressive. Please parse the block size into a numeric value. This should be interesting. Oh wow, I figured out the powers of 1024 or 1000 based on their syntax. That came from the size description. Oh my, that's a little scary. Let's see if we can simplify it a bit. Please simplify this function and make it more readable. Hmm, that's a little simpler. Let's regenerate the response. It's non-deterministic. That means you won't get the same answer every time. Well, it's different. I'm not sure it's better. We'll say it's the same. Please, make the function shorter. Oh, that's much nicer. It's like shopping for code. Please integrate this back into the full script. Okay, let's go up and copy the code. Take the script and put it in a new file. Let's save this as a script. We'll call it parseargs.sh. I hate unit testing. I'll make it do that too. Please write unit tests for this script. Unit testing bash scripts isn't straightforward. I already knew that. This should be pretty interesting to see what it comes up with. Let's save our new unit test friend as a file. Let's make our scripts executable. Now we open up a terminal and get ready to run our unit test. Here we go, the moment of truth. Let's see, fail, 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 pass, and pass. It's as if I had programmed it myself. Let's look at some code. It looks like the unit test runs a script and then checks to see if it threw an error. Let me figure out what's wrong. Five minutes later. Here's the first culprit. The script exits with an error code. We change that to zero, indicating no error. Let's fix the display version while we're here. Let's run our test again. That's a little better. It looks like the range test has a problem. Let's run the command. Invalid range. Let's try the full name. Ranger. Oh, need two minus signs. Still invalid. That would be the standard Linux option syntax. Let's try adding a equal sign. Okay, that works. Let's see what ChatGPT has to say for itself. In the original script, the option minus R is invalid. Please explain. Well, that's a bunch of bullshit. Do what I mean, not what I say. Please show the code for determining the range. 
well, at least it explains what it's doing. When I pass minus R15 to the script, the script displays invalid range. Please explain. At this point, you swallow the explanation. You copy the code, put it in your script, and you, my friend, have fallen into the rabbit hole. You are now coding by guessing. If you are writing a shell script and want to parse arguments, most likely you will use getOpt. An issue with the previous method is that you need to spend a bunch of time rewriting and testing each flag and option. GetOpt is designed to parse command line arguments. Let's add getOpt to our original script. 45 seconds later, we have an answer. We'll take that and put it in a file and start debugging it. 20 minutes later. If we got lucky, we have something that works. I repeated the same process six times. I spent an average of 15 to 20 minutes on each debugging the code. Let's break this down into three areas. When the AI writes code, there's a high variability in code quality. Sometimes the code is very good. Other times it is unworkably bad. Syntax errors are rare. Asking for a small snippet of code seems to be best to get something that works. It's too easy to wander down the wrong path and trying to get the code to work. You cannot blindly incorporate changes that it recommends. On the other hand, it tends to write code that is either too simple or overly complex. If you give the AI a snippet of code, it is very good at explaining what it does, so much so that you can use it to produce documentation in a lot of cases. Here's a badly kept secret. You become the code debugger. The difference between this and writing your own code is that you know what type of mistakes you tend to make. If you use AI written code, you need to be very good at debugging. If you like debugging someone else's code, this is for you. Let me know in the comments what your experience with AI generated code has been. Also, there's a link in the description below to sign up for the Jetson Hacks newsletter. Thanks for watching.